Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Undersea Monolith In 2015, archaeologists found something they couldn't believe. A monolith over 30 feet tall was discovered looming above the sea floor off the coast of Sicily. It was discovered at a depth of 120 feet, looking so much like Stonehenge that it could rewrite everything we know about ancient history. Researchers still don't know exactly what they're dealing with. It's been estimated the monolith is somewhere around 9,300 years old. It also looks to have been made in several parts, then put together. To make sure this really was a man-made monolith and not just a big rock on the bottom of the sea, researchers confirmed holes drilled by hand into the stone. These holes were probably used for wooden posts to keep the monument upright. Let me tell you a few things about the history of the area. 9,000 years ago, this part of the Mediterranean was above water, but a flood changed that forever, washing away any settlements on the coast. It's very likely that this monolith was part of an early civilization in the Mediterranean basin, knowledgeable in architecture and construction. The thing is, researchers don't know which civilization built the monolith, and because only one was found, it likely was not part of an actual settlement. No foundations or buildings were discovered near the object. It may have been a remote place of worship, just like Stonehenge in England. The suggestion here is that even before Stonehenge was built, people in Europe were practicing building megaliths. It could even be the descendants of whoever built this giant stone tower eventually made it to England, where they continued fashioning stone circles for ritual purposes. Number 9. The Tamil Nadu Civilization On the banks of the Thamirabharani River in India, a pot of rice was discovered from 3,200 years ago. Experts say that this simple discovery could change everything we know about Indian history, pushing two ancient civilizations together. To understand this a bit better, it's generally agreed right now that the Indus Valley Civilization was the very beginning of India as we know it today as a country and as a culture. But this pot of rice has shown that the Tamil Nadu Civilization likely existed in tandem with the other. The rice was found during excavations in the village of Kizadi. This is in the south of India, where the Tamil Nadu Civilization came from. It's in the north of India where the Indus Valley is located. The significance of this comes down to learned history. Most people in India believe everything Indian came from the Indus Valley, while the Tamil Nadu civilization of the south was merely a continuation of that several centuries later. What this discovery tells us is that there were two separate civilizations on the Indian subcontinent at the same time. It's impossible to say where each came from, but it's unlikely they both originated in the same location. This means that Indian people may have come from two very distinct cultures that spread from the top and from the bottom. If true, it could challenge many nationalistic views that people have on the subcontinent in regard to where their ancestors came from. Number 8. Ancient Baby Vertebra In Israel, researchers have discovered a vertebra that's 1.5 million years old. They believe this piece of skeleton belonged to one of the ancient hominids of the people who migrated from Africa into Eurasia. The vertebra belonged to a young boy between the ages of 6 and 12 when he died. He was pretty tall for his age and may have reached an astonishing 6.5 feet in height if he had lived into adulthood. It's not clear how he died, but his single remaining bone represents the earliest piece of physical evidence of an ancient human in Israel. Here's where things start to change history. The size difference between this fossil and other similar bones found at an excavation site in Georgia, the country, is immense. The difference suggests at least two different populations of ancient hominins arrived in Europe from Africa. This was not something previously known to researchers. What we can guess now is that migration to Georgia began 1.8 million years ago and another wave began moving to Israel 1.5 million years ago. Before, researchers simply thought there was one big wave of migrants entering the area. Now it seems ancient migration from Africa was not a single event, but occurred in many waves throughout a period of up to 300,000 years. The big mystery scientists can't figure out is why one of these groups was so enormous 
practically giants reaching nearly seven feet tall. They don't know where these giant people went or how long they survived in Israel before going extinct. Number seven, the Clovis in Michigan. 13,000 years before today, the state of Michigan was covered in a block of ice about a mile high. Suffice to say, this was not a habitable place. Archaeologists believe it was this thick wall of ice that kept some of the earliest North Americans out of the region. These were the Clovis people, the first organized society to live in what is today the United States. But something interesting just happened. An independent researcher with help from the University of Michigan identified a Clovis campsite in Michigan 13,000 years old. It's now believed to be the earliest archaeological evidence in the state predating every other human settlement in Michigan by centuries. It could rewrite the history of the native people here, and even the settling of the Great Lakes. What's really incredible is that it shows people were here even though it was largely inhospitable. Mind you, the small pieces of evidence from the campsite only show a small group of people, maybe six in total, living on the edge of a river. It may have been a kind of scouting party, a group of Clovis trying to see how far they could get. It's likely all the ice prevented them from going any further. And it could explain why the culture centered themselves around the Great Lakes region, since the glaciers didn't allow them to continue spreading. Number 6. Ancient Female Ruler A shocking discovery in Spain from 3,700 years ago has shed some light on ancient royalty. Spanish archaeologists have determined the body of an ancient woman from the Bronze Age may have been the first case of a female ruler in Western Europe. Her bones were discovered at La Almoloya site in Murcia, dated back to 1700 BC. The ruin in which her body was found may very well have been the first palace built in Western Europe, in the cradle of the El Argar society. These people flourished from between 2200 and 1550 BC as the original European society to use bronze, build monuments, and erect entire cities. They are the earliest example of a society that created a class-based state in the region. They divided people into categories of wealth and labor. This woman, name unknown, was found buried in a jar beneath the floor of a large room. She was somewhere around the age of 30 when she died and had a daughter buried elsewhere at the site. She was found with a diadem and other valuable grave objects connected to politics. This has led the researchers to believe she was the ruler of the entire palace, and maybe even the whole El Argar society. Number 5. Rewriting Chinese History The ancient city of Sanxing Dui was discovered by a man and his son in a small village in China's Sichuan province. They found some sacrificial pits containing treasures of bronze and gold, as well as plenty of pieces of pottery and fragments of old buildings. Throughout the last century, archaeologists have come and gone from this city, always uncovering more and more historical knowledge. We now know that Sanxing Dui was arguably the greatest civilization in China about 5,000 years ago, but what's really changing the history books is the fact that the city has given up proof of a civilization that had its own customs and rituals separate from any other in Chinese history. In other words, Sanxing Dui is a complete anomaly. Here's how mysterious the city is. The artifacts discovered here are so unlike any other relics found in ancient China, or indeed any other ancient place in the world, some think they depict extraterrestrials, as usual. Archaeologists have uncovered bronze statues with bulging eyes and weirdly shaped bodies that look as though they were made to depict alien visitors. Plus, the techniques they used to build their highly advanced city weren't seen in any other part of China for another 1,000 years or more. It's even more mysterious because no mention of them can be found in any historical record. We don't know what language they spoke, we don't know why they abandoned their city and vanished, and we have no idea where they went. Number 4. Humans in the Americas Archaeologists investigating the Coxcatlan Cave in Mexico have made a discovery that will probably force every textbook to be rewritten. They found animal bones and rock shelters suggesting a human presence in the area 33,000 years ago. This is shocking for one reason. It would mean that human beings were in North America 20,000 years earlier than mainstream scientists say. 
that's 20,000 years earlier than any other piece of evidence. It was a time when the ice sheets across North America were still thick and impassable, leading many to wonder how they arrived in North America at all. According to Andrew Somerville from Iowa State University, the discovery is changing the timeline of human migration into the Americas. While it hasn't been 100% confirmed yet, this cave does seem to contain evidence of human habitation. If it turns out to be true and verified, it will mean people were in the Americas earlier during the Ice Age. And if they were here 33,000 years ago, who's to say they weren't here even further back? Maybe even 100,000 years ago. Number 3. Seafaring Australians Surprising new archaeological research in Australia is changing what we know about the indigenous population of the continent. It turns out, ancient Australians were captains of industry, masters of the seafaring trade with vast international networks. These networks go back 3,000 years before previously thought. This is especially shocking because until recently, researchers believed the culture of Australia evolved in complete isolation. Nothing changed until Europeans arrived. But by looking at the archaeological record 3,000 years ago, researchers have found that Australians were building huge canoes that could go across the ocean, some of them up to 60 feet long. They then loaded each canoe with a crew of experienced sailors, a bunch of goods, and sailed thousands of miles to distant lands. This makes a lot of sense if you actually look at where Australians came from. Somewhere around 3,500 years ago, people moved out of Vietnam and southern China into Taiwan. They then started island hopping across the western Pacific. They dropped some people off in New Guinea. They continued on to the Solomon Islands, Fiji, Vanuatu, and eventually Australia. A single group spent about 500 years sailing through the Pacific, colonizing every uninhabited island. It makes complete sense that moving forward, these people continued their seafaring ways. The indigenous Australians continued to trade with other settlements in the Pacific, all the way to China. Number 2. The Drought That Toppled Empires Archaeologist Harvey Weiss was excavating a site in Syria when he found a layer of silt so dry and barren it didn't have a single earthworm in it. This might not sound that interesting, but it turned out to be huge. You see, every layer of silt corresponds to a period in time. This particular layer, absent any worms, proved that something drastic had taken place to scorch the soil thousands of years ago, and whatever it was, it must have been huge to leave a blanket of earth too rancid even for earthworms. Dating has helped us figure out it was all because of a drought in the year 2200 BC. This was a time when the Akkadian Empire was dominating the regions of Syria and Iraq. But in the year 2150, the empire had vanished, the central authority was gone, people had walked out of the region, and the Akkadians were no more. The discovery of an intense drought happening at the same time as the civilization collapsed is no coincidence. It now looks as if this ancient society crumbled almost overnight because of a sudden lack of rainwater. But guess what? The Akkadians were not the only ones. 4,200 years ago, there was a disaster in Mesopotamia. There was chaos all along the Nile, and the Aegean and Mediterranean regions were in turmoil. It's now looking like some kind of mass drought tore the world apart for a short time, toppling empires everywhere it went. While the fall of these empires was previously attributed to things like social anarchy and war, it looks like it may have just been something as simple as a pause in rainfall. Number 1. Early Scavengers In 1929, an amateur archaeologist made an interesting discovery in New Mexico. He found stone points scattered around mammoth fossils. These stone points were believed to be the ends of spears once used by ancient North American hunters to take down the biggest game of all, the mammoth. This was seen as clear evidence that human hunters were expert mammoth killers, and since then, similar artifacts have been found near mammoth bones at 11 sites throughout North America. These places are referred to by archaeologists as kill sites, places where ancient hunters descended on mammoths, giant camels, and mastodons. Well, all of this might actually be wrong. Archaeologist Meaton Aaron from Kent State University says the tools found at these supposed kill sites 
weren't from spears at all. Instead, they were just knives that hunters used to carve meat off carcasses of animals that were already dead. Other sharp objects found may have been used to throw at other scavenger animals trying to get to the mammoth remains. What all this means is that we may not have been as formidable as we like to think. It could be that instead of hunting mammoths, we just followed them around and scavenged the dead. This even makes sense based on some experimental data. Simulations have been done showing the force of an average human throwing a primitive spear at a mammoth. Researchers now don't even think these rock spears could have penetrated the hide of a mammoth. And even if they had magically penetrated the thick skin of one of these beasts, there is no way they could have gone through bone or the thick meat beneath. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon for more videos. Bye!